Now, this is a culture of E. coli. And you said you wanted to do a cereal dilution. Now, yep. what is a cereal dilution and why would we want to do one? Okay, so first of all, why would we want to do it? We want to be able to work out how many organisms are in here. Yes. And we can see there's, there's quite a lot. We've got a nice yeah. cloudy solution there. And if we plate that out, if we take a sample from there and plate it out, you, you can see what, we have what we call confluent growth. So yeah. It's basically just a carpet of microbes. There's no way that we can actually count these to work no. out how many no. microbes are there. Right. But there is a way that we can do that. Mm -hmm. We effectively just dilute the, cu the, the culture and then count the number of microbes we have in the plate. And the way that we do that, so for example, if I dilute this by 10 times right. and I then plate that culture out and say I have 10 colonies come up, I can say that there's 100 microbes in there. There's, a, there's 100 individual organisms that grow to make those colonies. So it's a little bit of dilution and a little bit of mathematics. That's all it is. It's really, really simple. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is slightly cumbersome method, um, but we're, we're going to try that out here first of all to dilute our sample down. Now, I'm going to, as usual, start by using the, the blue flame on the Bunsen right. burner. In each of these tubes, I have nine millilitres of sterile water, okay? Right. I'm going to take one mil of this culture yes. using my, um, my pipette. I'm going to take one mil out of this bottle and then put it in there. Right. From there, I'm going to take one mil from here and then put it in there. Yep. Mi remembering to mix each time, of course. Right. One mil from there and there and so on across the series. Once we've done that, we'll then plate each of the cultures out and we can count the number of microbes that are there. Right. Does that all make sense? So you'll get less and less. Yeah, we should. We, right. If we, we plate out this, we'll get this confluent growth. Yep. And even the one that's diluted with one milliliter into the nine, we'll still expect a lot of colonies coming up. Right. So we're just diluting it until it's countable but, effectively. Ah, right. and, also, yes. and also reliable, because the more dilute it gets, you might only get one or two colonies coming up. Right. But we want a fair number so that we can count and we know we're counting fairly accurately. Okay? Good. Right. So, as I say, I'm, I'll just start off. I've got everything ready. I'm going to start off by taking a mill out of this bottle. Same as before. <coughs> Flame in the tube. One milliliter's coming out there. Flame again. Now that's our stock culture, so culture, I'm going to just right. put that out, out of the way so I don't go back into it again. One mil into there. Okay, and give that a little mix. we we'll just get rid of that tip. Now I suppose you've got to get rid of that tip because if there's any liquid left in it, it would... It would contaminate it, it. We need to use a different tip each, each time, time, and that, yes. that's really important. So again, so this has got one mil culture already in it, and one and nine mils of water. This is our last one. Hopefully, by the time we get to this end of the scale, we've not got that many organisms left in, in the bottle. Excellent. Now, to be able to work out how many we've got, we have to plate them out again. All right. right. So. What I'm going to do this time though is I'm going to aim to only use one spreader. So right. what we need to make sure that we do is when I spread out the first culture, I'm going to start with the most dilute one. Right. All right. So I'm going to and that'd be useful in the classroom because you could that just give be. one group a spreader, and if they work from bottom up, mm -hmm. they only need one. They only need one. Um, they have to. You have to really reinforce that they the make sure that they do it in the right order. All right. So get my plates ready. Now I've got one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to plate out right. all five of my dilutions. Yes. I don't think I'm going to bother with the stock because we, we already know We've that we that. get... We've we got already that know that. So I'll just take five plates. And on each plate, I'm going to put on about 100 microliters. 
Right. Now, we've already talked about the fact that not all schools have these pipettes. A lot of them will just have the pastor. So I'm going to use the pastor pipette just now. Take the stopper out. Now, I'm just going to keep them in the order that I'm doing them in, and as, a, as, as 100 microliters, I'm going to aim for, what do you think, about four, four two drops? Two drops. Well, two drops. Two drops yeah, each yeah. drop's 50 microliters, oh, I, right, okay. I, I thought, and so we... That's we'll fine. We'll go for just two, two drops. drops. Now, this is the most dilute one first. sitting there while I put the other ones on. So now we're going to play out the last one, which will be the most concentrated one. And take it out. And then last final two drops on there. Right. So all you've got to do now is to spread those out got across the surface. Yeah, right. exactly. Now again, because I'm going to start at the most dilute and get up to the most concentrated, I'm just going to use the one spreader. Right. All right. Uh, the alternative, of course, would be to use alcohol to sterilise at each point, but. I think that's too much of a risk in the classroom if you can get away with avoiding it, quite quite frankly. Yeah, and it, you're going to be able to do it fairly smartly, aren't you? Mm -hmm. So it's not going to... The risk of contamination is very, very low. It's very, very low, you're right. So here we go, starting on the most dilute. And then we'll spread out the last one there. And then pop that in the waste there. And then we're just ready to label these up and put them in to be incubated for 20, 24 to 48 hours to see if we can count the number of cultures, that number of colonies rather. And then work out the number of organisms in that bottle? Yeah, yeah, very simply just by counting them, yeah. That's great. That's great. Can you show us an application of this, John? Why? We've already talked about maybe quantifying the number of bacteria in an infectious dose or in an industrial application. Have you got anything that you could show us well, how to do? I've, I've got a bag of frozen peas. And what I'm going to look at is whether I can grow some of the microorganisms uh -huh. that will be on the surface of those peas. Okay. Of course, these have come out of the freezer. Mm -hmm. But if you were to take frozen peas out of the freezer and leave them lying around for mm -hmm. a day mm -hmm. and then use them. Of course, the microbes that are naturally there mm -hmm. in the process of uh, packaging them mm -hmm. uh, could be a problem to you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to take just three of those frozen peas mm -hmm. and put them into this small pot. I'm going to use a pair of forceps so I don't put my fingers all over them. And I'm going to just use some ordinary tap water. Now, there should be very few microorganisms in the tap water, so it shouldn't be a problem. And then I'm going to leave them just sitting there for something like 24 hours. Okay. And what normally happens is that the microorganisms start to colonise um, that solution, mm -hmm. simply because there are, s there are some nutrients in the peas, mm -hmm. there's some microbes on the surface, yep. and we've got liquid. Okay. And sure enough, oh. here I've got one I did yesterday. Wow. And you can see that we've got a nice turbid solution containing lots of microorganisms. Right. And what I thought would be quite nice is to try and work out how many microorganisms we've got there. 
And we'll do that using a cereal dilution. We're going to use your cereal dilution Fantastic. to work that out. Mm -hmm. But in the classroom, sometimes we don't have a lot of equipment. No, that's true. And so I've got a technique that uses just very small volumes. I'm going to use these small microcentrifuge tubes. And I've sterilised these by placing them in the autoclave. I'm now going to close them and take five, mm -hmm. just like you did earlier on. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to add a small amount of water to each one. And then the culture from this pot. Now, I'm going to turn the Bunsen on mm -hmm. so we've got a nice upward draft. And I'm going to take some of this water and put them into each of those tubes. Yeah. I'm going to use a one mil syringe and suck up just 0 0.9 of a cubic centimetre. I'm holding the top, turning the bottle, sucking up the liquid, 0 0.9, flaming it. And because I'm working close to the Bunsen, I'm just going to open it and squirt it in. I go to the second one, flame the neck, suck up the liquid, flame the neck, put the top back on, and go to the second one. And I'm going to go down the series to do all of them with this one mil syringe. And if I work smartly and carefully, then I should be able to go right down to the last one, number five. So that was 0.9 mils of, of water, is that right? 0.9 mils, .9 mils okay. of water. Of our sterile water. And now what I need to do is to take just 0 0.1 yep. of a cubic centimetre yep. or 100 microliters. Mm -hmm. And today I'm going to use this mini micro pipette to suck up exactly 100 microliters. Yep. It works like a traditional micro pipette. There's a double action, one, two. So I will push down to the first position, suck up the liquid, mm -hmm. and then push to the second yep. position to get rid of it. I've also got some sterile tips here uh, that I've prepared earlier. Mm -hmm. So now I'm ready to go. I hold the top in my little finger, flame the neck of the bottle, tap on a tip, flame the neck of the bottle and place it down there. Open the top and I'm just going to suck this up. Because that's plastic, I don't want to put it into the flame. No, sure. And then I add it to the tube. Because that contains that microorganism, I'm just going to get rid of it. Gently invert mm -hmm. to mix, and I'm going to take 100 and put it into okay. there. So I hold the top, mm -hmm. flame the neck, tap on a tip, flame the neck, go back to the original one which we diluted, suck up 100 microliters, and put it into the second one. I'll get rid of the tip into there, mm -hmm. invert it gently, and I go back for the next one. And now I'm going to do the last one. Flame the neck, tap on the last tip, flame the neck, return the top. I go back to this one, yeah. suck it up, and put it into the last one there. Get rid of the tip into the waste, yep. and I can relax a little <laughs> now, because I've now taken 100 microliters from there into there, uh -huh. 100 microliters from there into there. Yep. Well, you understand yep. the principle, yep. good. Now all I need to do is to find an agar plate. Oh. Now you used six. I used several, yeah. Or, uh, yeah right, I'm going to use just one. Okay. And what I've done is I have divided it into six segments. Mm -hmm. 
and onto each one of these segments I'm going to place a drop mm -hmm. of this liquid. Now I had a, a little bit of fun trying to write these backwards so that when we look down on the top yeah. we can see the writing and the numbers are the right way round. What I'm going to do is to now take a second mini micro pipette, mm -hmm. but this one just does exactly 20 microliters. Right. And it's fairly important that you get a nice small drop and 20 microliters is, I think, the volume that you will need. Okay. I'm going to start off with this one here just to show you that when you use that, you get so much growth. You talked about confluent growth, it's just a mat yeah. of cells. Again, I'm going to take one of these little tips. Mm -hmm. So flame the neck, tap on a tip, flame the neck. I'm now going to just suck up, drop. Oh, Now you, you get so used to doing it yeah. that you sometimes forget. <laughs> so we we'll definitely want to avoid flaming of plastic chips you, for that very reason. For that Don't very reason. Melt. I get rid of the tip into there, hold the top, flame the neck. Tap on a tip, flame the neck. And this time I go to my first dilution. Suck up exactly 20 microliters and place it on there. Get rid of the tip into there. Mm -hmm. By this time you're getting used to this. Yeah. Tap in on a tip. Flaming the... It's quite repetitive, but it's quite good practice, isn't it? It is so you good get practice. Into the habit and, of doing these things. And it's very good for the students with the manipulative skills. Yeah, of course. Pick up the... And it reminds them the, the, the point of aseptic technique and, and when we've got to flame, change tips, it's that sort of thing. Because otherwise it's, it's difficult to remember from one lesson to the next. It is, yes. And now the last one. Flame the neck of the bottle. Mm -hmm. Tap on a tip. Flame the neck because it's good practice. And then I'm just going to go to the last one here. And there we are, number five. Six beautiful drops. Now, there's just one thing I should mention. It takes a little bit of time for the culture to soak into the agar plate. Yeah. And so it's best to leave those plates just to sit there for 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. If the pupils pick them up and start bringing them to the front of the class, then what often will happen is that the liquid will run across. So we're not going to spread these ones, John? No, we're oh just right, going to okay. leave them to sit there. Slowly, that 20 microliters will just gently diffuse, the liquid will diffuse, the water will diffuse into the agar. Mm -hmm. There will be a zone, a beautiful ring, where we've got our cells, mm -hmm. and where we've got a nice dilution, and individual cells can produce a mini colony, mm -hmm. then we should be able to count those. Okay. Just like you, where we've got so many we can't see them, yeah. we're going to get confluent growth and just a mat. Right, cells. okay. All we need to do now is to wait for that to soak in, and then we'll incubate for 24 to 48 hours and have a look at the results. What temperature will we incubate these ones actually? I would re recommend that we either do them at room temperature, or if you've got an incubator, put them in an incubator between 25 and 30. Okay, great. This is our original plate that we started with, confluent growth throughout the plate. And as we go down the dilution series, slowly you're starting to be able to pick out individual colonies when we get to this one. So this is going a, a 1 in 10 dilution, yeah. and then a 1 in 10 dilution yeah. to here. Uh, here, it's starting to get a bit more manageable, and you can see on my very last plate, yeah. you can actually count, there's about 100 colonies on that plate alone. So from that, we can then scale up and do a mathematical cal calculation to work out how many are on there. Now, you did it a slightly different way. Yes. Can we have a little look at your plate to well, see if we can calculate that? Here's my plate. So here you can see that we've gone from 20 microliters of the pure culture, yep. the dilution, all the way down. Now, when we get to this fifth one, we can count these very easily. I reckon there's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. There are eighteen individual cells that have produced small colonies. Okay. So now we can calculate the number of cells that we've got in here by multiplying up. Okay. So how would we go about doing that? 
we've got 0 0.1 in 0 0.9 of water. Yeah. And then we took 0 0.1 in again 0 0.9. So that's 1 in 10, 1 in 10, right. 1 in 10, 1 in 10, all the way down five times. By using this serial dilution technique, we can show that there are millions of cells in this small bottle. Great. It's good, isn't it?